Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and today I'm here with Danny Carabeno from V-Spot in New York. How are you, Danny? I'm doing well. That's good. And so tell me, V-Spot, where can we find you if you're in New York? Well, we're in Park Slope, Brooklyn. We're a sit-down restaurant in Park Slope. It's on uh, Fifth Avenue in Douglas. Yeah. But we also sell our food to 35 different health food stores throughout New York City. Oh, great. Like what an example? Well, some, some of the names are... Uh, there are some bars, health food stores. Westerly is our biggest account. That's in the uh, in Midtown on the West Side. Yeah. We have Health Nuts, uh, uh, Pine Box Rock Shop. It's a bar in Bushwick. Back to the Land in Brooklyn. Carolandra. Yeah. There are a lot of different stores. You can check our website. That's great. Places. That you're selling in many different places. Yeah, it's been cool. And what do you sell to those places? We sell uh, eight items right now. We have a whole wheat organic lasagna. Yeah. Of course, vegan. Everything we do is vegan. Mm -hmm. And uh, organic quinoa with chickpeas and kale and a yep. coconut curry sauce. Quinoa kale, two of my favorite things. Nice, it's our best seller actually. Okay. And uh, gluten free as well. Yep. And we have um, some empanadas, a breakfast empanada. It's actually my favorite. It's like a bacon, egg, and cheese. That's what know? I had the other night, empanada. Yes. Wasn't it? Yeah. We actually make five types of empanadas. Mm -hmm. And uh, my favorite one right now is the breakfast one. Cool. Good, that's great. And how long have you had these for opening in Well, we celebrated our five-year anniversary in May. Yeah, that's and great. So it's been just over five years. Mm -hmm. And what made you decide to open a vegan restaurant? Well, I'm vegan. Yeah. And so uh, I was a math teacher. I always wanted to own my own business. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of made sense, especially at the time, there were very few options in Parkside. Yeah. So we and were the first vegan restaurant. Sorry, we were the oh, first really? vegan restaurant in Parkside. Wow, that's great. And so, is it something you would encourage other people to do to have to, to open, open a, a restaurant? Vegan restaurant? Uh, <laughs> um, that's such a good question. Yeah. So, <laughs> I would say if the if the need, so to speak, or the desire of the customer is, is that high, I would say do it. It's a very, very expensive business. Yeah. Uh, I would say that, and I would definitely think it needs uh, a large amount of planning. Although it's, it's really hard to say. I would not readily tell someone to open up a restaurant. Yeah. Maybe to franchise a V spot, yeah. but maybe not necessarily open up their own restaurant. Yeah, it's, that's one of the things, isn't it? Like I find, I know a lot of people that just want to promote the vegan cause and get it out any way that they can, mm -hmm. and they think, oh, I'll just do a restaurant, and yeah. they don't necessarily plan it, they don't think about it, they don't even save up for it, yeah. and they open it, and then it, it just fizzles after a year or two because they realise one, it's hard work, yeah. two, that they need a lot more money than they thought, and three, that was we still have quite a selective market. Yeah, definitely yeah. it's true. I actually kind of had the same approach. I just yeah. kind of, I was teaching at the time and I probably within about five seconds randomly made the decision to open a oh, restaurant. Really? Literally, yeah. I was driving my father. I said, you know what, I think I'll open a restaurant. Yeah. And um, there was not a lot of money into it, but I, I did get some help. My brother runs the place with me. His name is Alex. Okay. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, you have to be very careful with money is the main mm -hmm. thing and, and consistency, of course. Mm -hmm. And because even though you want to promote the vegan cause, you still have to make money so that it's yeah. sustainable so that we can keep the message out there. So Definitely. I mean, I always want to do it only 100% vegan, yeah. uh, although it is, a, it is a bit of a challenge. In the first two years, I would say, at least once a week, customers would literally jog out of here when they realized it was vegan. They really? were like, oh, my mistake, and they would just head right out. Mm -hmm. They're like, you know what, forget it. And there's a sign when you walk in the door that says, Sorry, carnivores, we're, we're open. Yeah, I've got to make that sign. It's really cute. Yeah, right? that's good. Yeah. And um, so, what are your favorite things to make? To make, well, I haven't actually cooked in a while. You haven't? Okay, yeah. I can actually just write it down and yeah. then it gets made. So. Oh, that's easy. It's been five years, so you know, the, you know they got the recipes down. Yeah. My brother and I did make all the recipes, yeah. but um, I did, I think maybe I made, had some cereal that I made myself, mm -hmm. but that was probably the most I've cooked. Yeah. Uh, and it's the most cereal. prep work I've done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I don't cook, I, I haven't cooked probably in a year, mm -hmm. but my favorite thing to eat, I could say, yeah. um, from here. It's tough. I've actually eaten here every day for five years, yeah. every single meal, and for the most part, like 95% of the time. Mm -hmm. And um, well, you wouldn't have I to like, go anywhere else, would you? It's just easier, yeah. you know, and it's, I really do like it. So yeah. the burrito's probably what I've eaten the most. Mm -hmm. I've had it like 400 times. Yeah, 400, wow. Yeah, literally. Yeah, that, how many days would that be per year over five years? Well, you figure, oh, yeah. <laughs> you figure it's like 1,800 days we've been yeah. open, and so it's like, I have it like once every four and a half days. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're better at maths. <laughs> So um, where can people find you on the internet if they want to? Well, our website is spreadvegan.com, and um, it's also the vspotcafe.com. We have the both names are the same site, yeah. and um, you can check out all of our information here. What we do for catering, yeah. uh, the retail accounts, and we're also doing some work at fairs. We did like Elle Magazine Summer Screen Fair. Yeah. Uh, we do some concerts. We're going to do a, we have an upcoming big Matthews Band concert on Governors Island, which is really exciting. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Very good band.
So that's really pretty cool. I get to have some fun and work at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that's great. And so tell me about your journey towards veganism. When did you become vegan and why? Well, it's been, I was vegetarian for two years first, yeah. and then I've been, so it's been about ten and a half years total. Yeah. Uh, so two and eight and a half. Yeah. And um, I was just, uh, actually I was dating someone at the time, and neither one of us was vegetarian. Yeah. And then she would always show me articles about like how a big business would you would hurt animals to save money. And that was like the biggest thing. I was like a business major and a math major. So we would do research on companies and stuff like that. And we would see like just all this random, you know, nonsense companies would do in order to save a bug. And then I said, okay, for sure I want to get out of this, you know, this industry. And then I kept researching and then after the next two years after that. Then I decided vegan was really the way to go. Yeah. And I did, it's a little cheesy, but I did like the January 1st, no fancy vegan, like the New Year's, I'm gonna be vegetarian on New Year's, I'll be vegan on New Year's. It was just easier for me okay. just to kind of like to make that switch. Yeah. yeah. Well, whatever works, hey? Yeah, it definitely worked for me. Yeah. And what would be your top tip for someone that wants to open a restaurant? Uh, my top tip for someone who wants to open a restaurant, I would say plan as much as possible yeah. to the detail. The way I look at it is to work backwards. No one can tell you how many customers you have. So you have to work backwards and try to see how many sales you have to make by breaking down the cost analysis of each one of your items uh, and have to understand all the costs. You might not think about getting your, your exhaust cleaned and your insurance and your dishwasher. We like lease a dishwasher and like sanitation and employees and things breaking, which is like so much fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you never realize when that's going to happen. So like little things like that you have to factor in. And when you factor in all those costs and kind of figure out whether or not the, there are enough people to fulfill that, I think it's the best thing. But you really have to consider, um, you know, wear and tear and things like that over the course of a number of years because everything is so expensive. So you really have to, uh, if you analyze properly and you really, really focus once that analysis is done on having very, very tasty, consistent food, I think you can And simpler the better, especially at first. Yeah. Only expand and, and uh, increase your menu as the, the desired customers increase yeah. along with it. There's some great tips. Next time you're in New York, make sure you check out Vspot. And thank you, Danny, for thank the you interview. Very much. And have a look at vivalavegan.net for more interviews with inspiring vegans.